toughest thing to do in a forecast is to call that turning point, when, when the recovery begins. And as you can see, we, start, we said that the recovery, the, the recession would end in the second quarter and the recovery would begin in the third quarter. Okay, if you buy then our version of things, the NBER has not said it yet, but we believe when they do so, they will claim that the Great Recession ended in the second quarter of this year, the recovery we began in the third quarter, and if you believe those dates, uh, that means that the re Great Recession from 7 for the end of July, I'm sorry, the end of uh, 07 to mid-09 was a decline of minus 3.7%, the most costly, the deepest recession, and why it's called the Great Recession. There is a phenomenon that is generally cast in concrete, and that is following deep recessions are invariably strong recoveries. So I'd like to see what's hap what happened in the six quarters following previous recession recoveries. Uh, this is, these are the quarterly growth rates, and as you can see here, the average quarterly, average on a quarterly basis is 5.8, almost 6%. We are now expecting in the U.S. in 2010, we are calling for 2.4 percentage growth, uh, which uh, this is now on an annual basis. I'm now showing here's the, the depth of the recession. We're coming back 2.4, not the 5 or 6 percent growth, but nonetheless positive growth. Everybody's wondering, when is employment going to grow? When is unemployment going to drop? Here we're supposed to be in a recovery. What recovery? Well, in fact, typically at the, end, at the early stages of a recovery, unemployment continues to increase. It did so for six quarters following the 91 recession and the most recent dot-com recession, which you see in gray, uh, it ended here. Seven quarters, more than a year and a half it took before unemployment peaked. So it was there, it actually continued to increase. We are still losing jobs in our current recovery. We bottomed out. This is, this is near the forecast last year when we were losing close to 750,000 jobs on a monthly basis. Notice we've recovered. We're still losing jobs. This was just uh, last week's announcement uh, of 11,000 job loss. We're actually doing better than the, the dot-com recovery. Uh, not the set period, but this was the trough of the dot-com recession, and notice that we, it improved, and something like six months later, here's where we are, about the same point, but we were coming from a deeper trough in this recession. So we're coming out of it relatively quickly. We're still losing jobs, but the recovery is moving along. Where are we, or what do we forecast in terms of housing starts? for the next six quarters. We're going to be going from 540,000 units, the beginning of the third quarter of this year, to 625,000 units by the end of 2010. Let's, let's put that into perspective. There it is. That's a difference of 565,000 units Converting that to dollars is a loss of $90 billion in direct spending. But it gets worse, because that's com residential. Commercial, I'm just going to cut through it all and go right to the dollars. We're showing a drop of $60 billion. So, so unlike residential, where at least there's a pickup, it's not as much of a pickup as prior. Non-residential is actually declining. And the usual pickup, Generally, in a recovery, non-residential does not do well. On average, it's an increase of about 10 billion, an increase. This is a drop of 60, which means that the spread or the gap is really 70 billion dollars. This is it. This, this explains a whole lot of the Great Recession right here. This has been a historically unprecedented inventory sell. It's as if manufacturers decided, let's stop producing, just sell our inventories, let everybody go, let's close up uh, this, this shop or, or this factory or this facility and, 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 and just hold back. This shows what happened during the, 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 the cycle, the, the, the bursting of the bubble, from, an, uh, from 227,000 average price U.S. at the high point in 2006. 
to an index to 167,000. That was a drop of 26 percent uh, in housing prices. The turnaround thus far is 11 percent. You know, housing prices on a month-to-month -month basis nationally have been increasing. In fact, we are predicting that average housing prices fourth quarter right now to fourth quarter next year for the nation, housing prices will increase 4.2 percent. The way I'm looking at, and I'm trying to be consistent across, is year over year. There's one advantage here. When you see that, you see growth picks up steam by the end of 2010. So we're picking up a little bit of a, you know, pickup in the growth. So what we concentrate is employment. That is the most comprehensive local and state variables that gives us the cue, yes, we are in recession, we're coming out of recession. So let's see what has happened. As you can see, in May of 07, employment in Orange County went below zero. And that is what we mark beginning of recession. So recession in Orange County has started, as you can see, quite earlier than the recession at the state level. The state started January of 08, very similar to the U.S. economy. These three variables more or less impact everything. Okay, what are these? Performance of national economy, performance of international economy, what we sell, and construction spending. Why? That's a local variable because it has such a huge multiplier. The bad news is, yes, we're going to lose job, but the good news is it's going to be only the first half of the year. We see job creation is going to show up in the middle of 2010, and it could be even in May, a little early. And again, I'm talking about year over year. But unfortunately, when you average it for the year, that's what you see. These are the variables that are we use to forecast home prices. Now, I'm going to mention each one of them, give you positive, negative outlook, and give you our forecast. Look what has happened. It is amazing what's happening to affordability. Let me explain it very quickly and draw a conclusion. At the peak of home prices, a single family home in Orange County was $747,000. Homes were not affordable. People were basically getting fancy mortgages to get into those homes. Now, with the median family income of $81,000, because home prices have gone down and mortgage rates have gone down, you need only 29% of your income. And this is reasonable and, according to the historical norm, it's acceptable. That's why you're seeing some first-time home buyers are coming to the marketplace because of affordability. So I put that in positive. You can imagine in our equation it comes in with a high positive coefficient. Inventory of resale home, what's happening to that? It's shrinking really rapidly. Let me show you the aggregate number. This shows you that the multiple listing is going down. And if you break it down by price range, you could see a sharp decline in inventories. So when we put all of this together, we see actually home prices, median home price, is going to increase roughly about 5%. We're forecasting median price which is roughly now about 430,000. We're seeing 5% increase. So this does not necessarily suggest, suggest the values of home are going to go up. The median is going to go up 5%. However, we believe the low end of the market probably have seen the brunt of decline in home prices, and it's going to be a stabilizer. High end of the market, we're still worried about.